All right, it's Inside the NBA. It's presented by Kia. Here we are live in Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. Shout out, by the way, to uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Got a tweet from a guy in Stockholm. <laughs> Bill Kajas DeWitt says, hey, we got a lot of NBA fans here in Sweden. Give us a shout out on Inside. There you go. What's his name again? His name is Milkaius DeWitt. I bet he's sitting around, See? Sitting the, around the, the South Dakota. Ka- Milkaius DeWitt. Yes, there you go. I like that. Yeah, so uh, we got Shaquille the Nitwit. <laughs> <laughs> My tweets are just a vehicle for you to get to him. There you go. Um, let's, let's jump to the highlights of this. We just saw the game. I know. Well, not everybody just saw it. There's Kevin Durant doing a little pregame work. I don't know what that does. To reevaluated help. next week. Russell Westbrook would have his second straight triple double in this game. Start of the game, 0 for 8, though. Uh, he didn't stop shooting. <laughs> no, he got he got some shots up tonight. 38. 12, 12 for 38. Come on, man. That's hey, too Kenny, many shots. Kenny, question. You're a guard. I know he shot 38 times, but he had 11 assists. So does it, that make it okay to still shoot 38 times? No. Even though you're keeping people involved? I don't think it's any time that you should shoot 38 what? times. <laughs> <laughs> you see Markeith Morris hot early, 35-23. And, you know, I, I do think that he's a fast pace for an MVP possibility, but 38 times is a lot of shots. Brandon Knight got the finish on the other end from Phoenix, 38-25. Yeah, kid, as you said it right, that's never a reason to shoot 38 times. That's his triple overtime. Come on, I know. <laughs> You saw DJ Augustine. People don't shoot 38 times in a week. And then you see Russell Westbrook pulling it up. 53 to 46. It was a 53-48 Phoenix lead at the half. We moved to the third quarter. And it's Cantor. Oh, good move. Because, you know, you, you, these things could have been more of a, a steady occurrence when you were not shooting the ball well. You know, just getting the ball into the post because he's not, he's, he's not a, a reluctant passer, Cantor. He will pass the basketball, so... OKC came out 10 0 on him in the third quarter and took the lead after trailing the entire Ooh, good pass. Oh, good pass. Oh, good pass to Alex Len from Ooh. Eric Bledsoe. And then the uh, Morris brothers. I call him the law firm, Ernie. Markeith to Marcus, 4 3. Marcus had 10 points in the third quarter. You know a lot about law firms, you criminal. 86 84 Suns going to the fourth quarter. <laughs> the pass. Hey, I was acquitted most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Alex Len for the slam there, and it's 93 to 84. So they come out 9 0 to start the fourth quarter. And then Eric Bledsoe with a finish. He flirted with a triple double. Phoenix with a 14 2 run. And here comes Westbrook. Oh. You know, Shaq, uh, you know, you talk about he shot 12 for 38. But Bledsoe, he almost had a triple double. He had 28, 13, and 9. That's a great game right there on 11 of 16 shooting. That's a much better game than 39, 14, and 11 in my opinion. All right, so what if it would have went 29 for 38? You don't, you, you, you don't I shoot think, that many times. Well, if you go 29 for 38, I'm but not that's some game. game. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> some game, but you go 60s and 70 points. Westbrook again and... Draws the contact. I, I always feel if you're shooting over 15 shots, 16 shots, you should be getting a point and a half, point and one half for every shot attack. That tied the game at 109, and this was the last Get chance shot of regulation there, for uh, Phoenix, and it wasn't much of one as Ibaka blocked it into the expensive seats. And so we're going to go to overtime where Phoenix was 0-4. OKC 2-2 two and two in overtime games, and Bledsoe. He finished with 28, 13, and 9. This was a heck of a block. Look at that. Ooh, and they had Bledsoe blocking waiters there. That is a great block. Oh, that's all ball, too. Good question. And then right here, Russell Westbrook. Oh, oh, this is the layup with a chance to tie. He stepped on, with him, on, on Morris's foot. Otherwise, that would have been. Would have been still in the back on a double overtime game. Because <laughs> right here, stepped on his foot, yeah, yeah, yeah. lost his elevation, couldn't get to the other side of the rim. And the Phoenix Suns win in overtime for the first time this season. Boy, they've lost a lot of tight games. They came in 2-10 and ten in games decided by three points or less. 6-16 six and 16 games decided by five or less. Four of those losses coming right at the buzzer. And tonight they win in overtime, 117 to 113 and the season high seven game winning streak for the Thunder is snapped. They've had a couple of those reaching seven and uh, Russell Westbrook 
since the 28th of January. Uh, three triple doubles since then. He had his fourth triple double of the season, which leads the NBA tonight. 17 assists on Sunday against Denver. And of course, the, the month of February punctuated by the All Star Game MVP honors for Russell Westbrook. Big win for Phoenix in this one because they lose that game, they lose the tiebreaker. They'd be down three games to none against Oklahoma City in the head to head. So they keep uh, their hopes uh, afloat in terms of uh, the number eight spot. Uh, game and a half behind, two games on the loss side behind Oklahoma City. New Orleans without Anthony Davis still been hanging in there uh, since the All Star break. And so they are the number nine team right now. But Oklahoma City's seven game winning streak snapped tonight in Phoenix, Jet. Well, yeah, um, too much Russell, you know, I'm playing unbelievable basketball, but, uh, you know, it just goes back to 38 shots. No one else has gotten to the offense tonight. Uh, regardless of the 11 assists, um, I don't think anyone else got into an offensive flow that could help them win against Phoenix. And Phoenix allows you to get shots, and I know Russell knows that because they spread the floor, so defensively they don't get back a lot. But... Um, 29 shots would have been better. Yeah. You know, Ernie, I, I think the thing that a lot of people don't understand, you can be a good player, you can be a real good player, but you can't become a great player until you make the guys around you better. And what I mean by that is, when you are as uh, explosive as Russell Westbrook is, you, can, you see you can get 30 shots tonight. Well, more than that. Because you can get a shot every time. But sometimes when you make a move, you say to yourself, I'm going to get a Baca shot. I'm going to get Cantor a shot. I'm going to get Dion Waiters a shot because those guys can't get their shots. You know, uh, that, that's the thing. Like, you could all, when you're a, a great offensive player, you can always get a shot. But the, 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 the thing that comes is that next level as a player where you says, you know what, I'm going to get other guys on my team. Don't, don't, don't you think he's made – don't you think he's made – Strides in that area. I mean, this is you're looking at this, this one yeah, game yeah, with, yeah. with 38 backwards. shots. He went guy backwards had a, Guy had a triple double in 28 minutes the other night and didn't take a boatload of shots. Well, uh, well, they but won. In, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they won, but they lost tonight. Like Kenny said, he, he took a step backwards tonight. Ernie, just because you can get a shot doesn't mean you should take the shot every time. I know, like, I think know. about it. Shaquille O'Neal, you know, I never played against Will Chamberlain. But Sha Shaquille was the greatest dominant offensive force we've ever seen in the NBA. He could actually get a shot every single time down the court. But uh, Devin George, Rick Fox, Dennis Scott, he drew the double team to get those guys wide open shots. Could he have just went down there and laid it in or dunked it or took a shot? But that's how he made those guys better. And that's when you take your, your game to the next level. Yeah, he could have scored or got a shot. But that's how, like, think about, think about all the wide open threes Derek Fisher got because there was three guys guarding yeah. Shaq. And, and the same thing with Kobe. You know, that you have, like, Michael Jordan, uh, John Paxson, Steve, Steve Kerr. Kerr sometimes Craig you don't, Hodges. You, yeah, Craig Hodges. You don't have to make the shot. That's how you make guys better. And then in certain situations, like when you take 38 shots, you know, you can't take four or five bad shots in a row. You know, there was a couple possessions where he just tried to come down and do it all. You know, Chuck, you always say they need a big guy. And I asked this question, are they going to use the big guy? Yeah. Karen only had 11 shots. And as you can see from the clips, he's a hell of an offensive player. Yeah. You know, since the trade, I think he's having 15 and eight, whatever. But this guy can really play. So, you know, I agree with everything you said. He has to utilize his help some more. Every time Durant is out there, he, he, he utilizes Durant as a help. But when Durant is not there, he can get his. But sometimes I think he has to use his talents yes. to draw the defense, to kick it to everybody. Just and, it, and, it, and Ernie, what happens, it'll make it easier on him. Easy. It'll make it easier on him. When those guys will stop cheating, they're like, oh, I can't leave this guy, this guy. He, he abandoned the game plan. Yeah, tonight. exactly. Tonight think, he did. Yeah. And, and what he has to realize is when we lose, we should still lose a certain way. And if we still lose a certain way, I'll shake the other team's hand. Tonight, I don't know if he could shake their hands because he, he, he really put himself in a, in a position to lose. He didn't put himself into a position to win. We uh, will take a break here on Inside. And when we come back, highlights of the uh, Golden State and Cleveland game. And to get you ready for that, a little State Farm audio assist. 
Hey, David. How are you? How are you? Hey, things have gotten, things, things have gotten a little better. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Like, you're, you're not doing anything different, but congrats. I'm going to just stand right here, right in front of you the whole game. Spent all that money on that ticket, you're not going to be able to see anything. It's a real challenge for us now in defense, all right? It's a good offense team because everybody can score. Let's take away all the easy stuff. It's hard enough as it is in the half court, and we're doing a good job. We got to take away the easy basket. We're in great shape. We're in great. We haven't even kicked in yet. And we're four points down. We're in great shape. Let's start playing here. Let's go. Come on, fellas. Let's play our best quarter of defense right here, right now, everybody. Right. Try and let me know, but play your best quarter of defense. Let's go. Come on, fellas. Come on, guys. We're right there. Nine point game. Couple stops, couple scores. Let's put some heat on them. Keep playing. Keep playing. Plenty of time. We gotta make some stops, though. All right? Here we go. All right, we'll make one. Hey, we'll make one more little push. We'll try to get a hoop here, get a stop. If not, we'll call it a night. But if so, let's give it a push, all right? Hey, check out Bleacher Report. Uh, their latest is the uh, part two of the comeback story of Paul George, who practiced on Thursday for the first time with the Indiana Pacers. Two teams with championship aspirations, two MVP hopefuls. Steph Curry and the Warriors spending Thursday night in Cleveland in their final meeting of the season against LeBron and the Cavs, the last meeting unless they see their way through the playoff minefield into the NBA Finals. The site, the queue in Cleveland, where the Cavs have won 10 in a row. So the stage set for a good Thursday night matchup, and LeBron, four-time MVP, and Steph Curry. Would it be in the cards this year? We will see down the stretch right away. A Steffertless three, and they're up one after one. LeBron knocks down a three of his own. Oh, oh, good move, good pass. Oh. David Lee played incredible in the first half, Ernie. He was the, the, the third option for the Golden State Warriors. Great pass. The white Chris Webber. Uh, Andre Iguodala with the feed, and then LeBron gets hot, grabbing the baseline, and then oh. over Iguodala. Dang. There's nothing you can do about that, Ernie. That's just better defense, better offense. You better something. Ooh. Clay Thompson's first field goal came in the second period. It was a two point game. Oh. Corner three from Kyrie Irving, who's back out of really stroking that three ball lately. Kevin Love from deep. Cavs up at the half, 61 56. You like that shot, Chuck? Uh, you know, sometimes I like him shooting threes, but I like him in the post some more. more. Oh, oh, step you back. 12 0 run by the Cavs to start the third quarter. And Curry. Ooh, and one. That's not no call, and, and that was a foul. And and Steve Kerr oh. is upset about that. That's because he got fouled. Steve, by the way, picked up his eighth technical of the season tonight. Oh, don't take Trailing only off, Steve. Frank Vogel. Go get him, Steve. Well, I, I actually thought at one point, you know, watching this game, I, and I think Shaq and Charles will attest. There's certain games you go, hey, listen, we're not going to get some calls, and this is going to be a tough game, and. Just don't lose your composure. And I thought they got a little unrattled, a little rattled, Golden State. You know, Green got a technical, Steve got a technical. They weren't characteristic in, like, this is a tough game mode. Think about Draymond Green working the offensive glass after his own miss. So it's a 10-point game with LeBron. Come on, man. Come with that double team. Can't let a guy just dribble in the post all the time. Season high, 42 points for Ooh. LeBron James. 11 rebounds, five assists. His third game of at least 40. His 16th game of at least 30. And uh, Cleveland, they're rolling. 11 straight wins at home. They've won 18 of their last 20 as they take this from 110 to 99. Here's uh, Steve Kerr afterwards talking about uh, the technical and other stuff. Uh, just the usual, you know, I was upset about a call and he said something and I said something and 
then we hugged and made up the next time out. So Bennett's great. Bennett's a great official, and he, he always communicates with coaches, and so I have no problem at all. I was frustrated with our play and with a few calls, but that's, you know, that's always going to be the case. You're, you're taking off the jacket. Was that uh, part of that? No, it was just hot in there. Mm -hmm. It was a little warm. Hot inside the queue on a night that... Uh that uh, Marv described as a bone-chilling six degrees in Cleveland. Here's the, the numbers that you wanted to see yeah. uh, as before that game began. And if the Golden State backcourt advantage would outweigh the frontcourt advantage of the That's not going to get it done for the Golden State Warriors right there. They, for, for, the, the, for Golden State to be effective, they have to dominate in the backcourt and try to keep it level somewhere in the 50% range on the, on the inside. Because they're two best players. Yeah, that's the Hennessy never stop, never settle. And this is the, the tweet from somebody's going to tell Chuck that these backcourt, frontcourt margin stats are technically analytics, well, first says of all, Sean. Th th those are just, just stats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> first of all, stats, that, are, <laughs> stats are analytics. Well, it has really nothing to do with analytics. They, they, Golden State has the best backcourt in the NBA. They have to dominate their competition. They're little inside. You have to pound them inside, dominate them on the, in the paint and, in the, uh, and, and on the boards. You know, uh, it, it, I told you. I told you. Is it analytics? <laughs> no, <laughs> don't go down no, this no, no, road again, say, dude. Wait a minute. Please. Wait a minute. Just let please. Me, as I've please. told you, analytics are like when you're black and See, white. Please. Like when you're black, they call you a cook. When you're white, they call you a chef. They just call it analytics. They can charge you more for it. They're just stats. I mean, everybody <laughs> pays attention to stats. That's the worst stinking headache. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Hey, you know I'm right, kid. Am I right? Uh, that's a chuck well, analogy. Yeah. What was that's that? A chuck. They, uh, what was that a chuck analogy? That's it. That's it. They just they just changed the name to analytics. They could charge you more for it. Eastern Conference standings, please. What is it? Black Conference. person cook. You white person when you're black. You're yeah. right. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> Underdog. Atlanta still leads the <laughs> put way. That on, put that on a t-shirt. 45 and 12. <laughs> Cleveland now. Uh, just a touch in front of Chicago for the Central Division lead. Uh, oh. Everybody, you know, and by the way, Derek Rose is going to have his knee surgery on Friday. And then Good we'll, luck. We'll know Good luck, Derek. You're, you're, you're a great kid there. and a hell of a player. Good luck with that. Um, so is anybody are we respecting Atlanta enough in what they've done, Kenny? I am. Uh, I, I just, you know, we, we now, we thought it was a three-team race, and, and it kind of, now two teams are clearly ahead, but Toronto's still in the in the, in the boat. But they're not, they're not they don't have as many paddles uh, as as Atlanta and um, Cleveland. But the one thing that we haven't seen is Atlanta in duress in a in a playoff situation when you're seven games, you're playing the same person over ten nights, and not only the same person, the same person is Superman. Yep. LeBron James. Yeah, and it's one. I think it's no, one of those. Superman. It's one of those things too, though. But you know, you're playing LeBron. You're waiting to see. The, the Hawks are not a team that has proven it in the postseason. They don't That's have it. any kind of a That's championship the pedigree, or but even getting to the conference final. Neither yeah. does Toronto. Or even so getting to the conference final. That's why Toronto people are looking at. Round. Well, in fairness, neither has Cleveland. This is yeah. a totally different Cleveland well, team. But LeBron has. I know that, but listen. And that's what they look at. I understand that, but the, the, it's still basically a brand new team. You know, Kevin Love, uh, Kyrie. Timothy Moscow, they haven't been deep in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, we, uh, LeBron's the best player in the world, but I still think with the addition of Moscow, it changed the total outlook on the Cavaliers team. They went from a small team to a big team, and then you bring in JR and Shumper give them uh, athletic ability on the perimeter. Cleveland is cl – actually, listen, I still thought until Derrick Rose got hurt. And first of all, I think people better be really careful counting out Chicago. Yeah, I mean, because I told somebody, because you know, you know, we everybody wants to know what we think. I said, Chicago's the only team that's really got three All Stars, and everybody said, well, Derrick Rose is gone. I said, they still got Butler, Gasol, and Noah, who are really three All Stars. Name me any other team with all three All Stars that we would count out. You know, I know Noah didn't make the All Star team this year, but he's been an All Star the last couple of years. So I'm not counting out Chicago, the only team in the Eastern Conference that you would be afraid of realistically is the Cavaliers. Uh, the Chicago Bulls right now, uh, I think they feel like we can beat Toronto. We can beat Atlanta. So I still think it's going to be a dogfight to the end. Uh, you know, my top two teams are Atlanta and Cleveland. You know, Atlanta, you know, you have to respect them, you know, for what they've done. I agree with you said. They don't, they don't have any, any, any seven-game experience. So, 
you know, that's unfortunate for them. You know, they're playing so well. People, you know, forget what they do and they say, well, can he do it in a seven game series? That's how good they are. People say, we don't even want to see him in a regular season no more. Can he do it in the playoffs? But, you know, Cleveland is, is you know, putting some, some games together. You know, they're starting to get that flow. I think it's going to be Atlanta and, and, and Cleveland, last two teams. 11 straight home wins for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, switching gears now. Uh, one of the NBA's all timers passed away Thursday. Earl Lloyd, the NBA's first African American player, died at the age of 86. Lloyd first played for the Washington Capitals uh, in 1950. Chris Weber has more on the Jackie Robinson of the NBA. Earl Lloyd, a true barrier breaker. Drafted in the ninth round of the 1950 draft by the Washington Capitals, played nine NBA seasons. Lloyd scored over 4,600 points during his NBA career, including winning the 1955 NBA championship with the Syracuse Nationals. Lloyd and teammate Jim Tucker would later become the first African-American players to win an NBA championship. In 1968, he became the first African-American bench coach with the Detroit Pistons. He would later become the second African-American head coach in NBA history, coaching 77 games for the Pistons. In 2003, Earl Lloyd was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as a contributor. Earl Lloyd, barrier breaker with a legacy never to be forgotten. Barrier breaker and pioneer, and um, Chris did a, a great job encapsulizing his career there. We want to play another piece of tape because John Thompson, back in 2000, uh, interviewed Earl Lloyd. He had something interesting to say about you, Chuck. Play it. If you ask me today, name a player that you respect as much as any player ever played in the NBA, I say Charles Barkley. Why? I mean, Charles, you know, nobody ever measured Charles. I don't think Charles Barkley is six foot six. Okay. Charles Barkley is about six foot five. Or four. Or four, maybe. Mm -hmm. And here's a guy, man, that's, I mean, he's, he's going to be a Hall of Fame player. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy plays his heart out, man. Wow. You know, I got to, man, that's, that's, uh, ooh, that's so tough. Uh, that's such a nice compliment coming from him. You that's know, an honor right it's there, a, it's, it's an amazing honor uh, for somebody. And when I met him, it was really cool. And you know how much I love Coach Thompson. Uh, but, man, I, the older black guys, I have so much admiration and respect for them. Because Shaq and Kenny can attest, just playing basketball is hard enough. But I couldn't imagine all the mental stress that those guys were under. Mm -hmm. Like, just playing basketball in its own right is stressful. But I couldn't imagine all the civil rights stuff that they had going on. Or what you're going to hear from the, one yeah, night like, to the next, well, from like one the, arena just, to the you next. You know, just like, like we can't stay in the same hotel, we can't eat at the same places, and, you know, people screaming stuff, but then have to block that out and go actually play basketball. Uh, you know, I told you, one of my heroes is Joe Morgan. He said when he met Jackie Robinson, he said he just wanted to say thank you. And when I met Mr. Law, like I said, when I see Coach Thompson and Bill Russell and all guys, those older black men who played the game, I always tell them, thank you, Spencer Haywood, Wes Unsell, you know, guys like that. Man, I just tell them thank you because uh, it's it just, a, and the men they had become because uh, Mr. Law was just such a nice man also. But that, that, that was awesome right there. I thank you all for putting that on. Yeah, awesome. You know, I mean, I think the one thing about, um, the inclusion that those guys allowed us all to have, uh, the perseverance that they bestowed, uh, allow us to not even think about any of those things today. And you can never take that for granted. Uh, you can only admire them. And you can only, and, and no matter what race, creed, or color you are, you can only admire people who have done things that are groundbreaking, like Earl Lloyd. And let me say this one thing, Ernie. And being from Alabama, everybody know about all the BS that went on through the racial history, Dr. King, Selma, and everything like that. And I've always felt that my entire life. But if it wasn't for basketball, basketball was the first time in my life that I ever interacted with, with white people and felt like we can actually 
get along and there's not all this animosity and hatred, all this stuff going on. And, man, I, that's one of the reasons I always tell people, man, I thank God every day for basketball because uh, it opened my mind up. Uh, it, it opened my mind up to, to, to get together with other races that I, even when we still were segregated in Alabama, living in different neighborhoods, I, that's one of the reasons I really love basketball because it opens up so many doors like this situation we're talking about now. Last word, Shaq. You know, I just, you know, to piggyback on what, you know, Kenny and Chuck say, you know, just want to say thank you. And I also couldn't imagine all the stuff that they went through. And, you know, I, I, I urge all the children to, you know, learn about your basketball history because, uh, you know, when, when I was a young a juvenile delinquent, I, I, the first movie I saw was The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. That was Dr. J. So, you know, I thought Dr. J invented basketball, but, you know, I've got a chance to talk to Bill Sharman, who was a teammate of, of, of Earl Lloyd, and he told me some wonderful things. So, you know, thank you to all the pioneers that have paved the way for young African-American men. Pioneer, NBA champion, um, legend, and uh, Earl Lloyd passes on at the age of 86. I'm Lance Fresh. Check us out as we showcase the latest in NBA style. From haircuts to high tops, we've got it all covered. How do you want your NBA stars dressed? I like a guy in a nice suit. Suits or casual wear on guys? I like them in suits. Tight suit. A nice suit with a classic style, with a nice color. Who do you like in a casual wear? I like to see Wayne. Nice tailored suit, taper leg. When you're a professional sports player, you should wear a suit to the game. Have a casual way about it. For more NBA style clips, log on to NBA.com slash style. All right, check out the starters. Uh, our guys, Skeets, Tass, Lee, and Trey. Where can you find that shack at 630? On NBA TV. You certainly can. And, uh, and they have some thoughts on as we head down the stretch of the NBA season. Thanks, guys. All-Star Weekend, done. Trade deadline in the books. NBA playoffs fast approaching. And to make things a little more interesting, we here at the Starters have three bold predictions as we enter the home stretch of the regular season. Number three, this bold prediction is Paul George will return from his broken leg, and the Pacers are going to make the playoffs. He had his first full practice on Thursday. He looked great, and there's no rush. The Pacers are knocking on the door, and with guys out like Chris Bosh and Kemba Walker from their respective teams, this Pacers team with all that playoff experience, I think they're a lock if PG comes back in a couple weeks. Yeah, why not get him a little bit of time playing against NBA competition, get to the playoffs, make it ugly the way the Pacers do. Not a fun team to face in the first round. But we see the Pacers. Pacers Hawks <laughs> again with the rematch. Yeah, the 1 8. Our second bold prediction in the Western Conference home court advantage is not going to mean much. Just look at the bottom four teams in the playoff picture right now. The Mavs are a veteran laden title team. The Clippers have the most efficient offensive team in the league. The Spurs are the defending champs. And the Thunder might be the title favorites when they're totally healthy. It's not about home court advantage this year, it's all about who you end up playing. You can't even call these bottom teams. I mean, yeah. That is a murderer's row from 5 through 8. Yeah, in last year's playoffs, the road teams were. 24 and 26 in round one. So the home court advantage was non-existent back then. I think the Oracle's a tough place to play, but they're all tough out the West. Final prediction. This is going to be the tightest MVP finish of all time. James Harden, Steph Curry, a lot of people torn on whether who is the leading MVP vote getter. You can make a case for either of these guys. Sure. But suddenly, Russell Westbrook yep. and his crazy numbers and what he's doing on the Thunder is in the mix. And of course, LeBron James, the Cavaliers, starting to play like we expected them to play. He's always in your conversation for the best basketball player of all time. This could be the closest race since 1990. Charles, I'm sure you remember that one. You actually received the most first place votes, but it was Magic Johnson who walked away with the trophy. I'm sure Charles has forgotten about that. That's got to hurt. <laughs> At least he got one eventually. Yeah, you did get one eventually but let's hope we have a race as close as that one back in 1990. Very, very close. I think we will. Again, especially between Harden and Curry. Agree, disagree, got some predictions of your own. Let's hear them, guys. Back to you. Yeah, tough call to be sure. And I uh, definitely didn't vote for you for first place. Well, you know what? The only thing that made me bad about that, Kenny, was I got all the first place votes and didn't get into second or third place votes. Because you, you no, 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 I should, no, I should have been MVP. Should've been, I should have been MVP that year. Mm -hmm. All those guys who voted for me, First, they, they had laughing. it right, but he's laughing about the Steve Nash years. Oh no, no, yeah. but I'm saying that year I was the <laughs> <laughs> twice. Yeah, the, but that, that yeah, twice I was the I got best. Robbed. You know, I, I, 
And see, that's going to say, I, I don't ever look at it getting robbed. It's the guy who's having the best year. Like I said, the only reason I got mad, I don't know how you get all the first place votes and don't get in the second or third place votes. I, I, I got all the first place votes and then didn't get any votes after that. That was the, thing, the only thing that made me mad about it. You know, the starters making bold predictions. And Kenny, uh, last year, last May, you were uh, making a bold prediction, which we can roll right now. Okay. I'm going to make a bold statement. In two years, Russell Westbrook will win an MVP. Ken Stradamus. He's got a bullet on his back trying to get it. You know, I, I just feel that we haven't seen anyone. It's kind of like when Charles came into the league. We hadn't seen anyone with his dynamic. When, when uh, Shaq came into the league, we had never seen his dynamic. We've never seen anyone this explosive at the point guard position. Any era, any time, anywhere at the point guard position. We've seen two guards, but we've never seen a guy be able to put fear in point guards' hearts on both ends of the court like this guy. And his ferociousness, his attitude, is Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan-like. Maybe not as much individual skill as those guys, but when you're that lethal of a weapon, I, you know, last year, I was like, he's, I'm sitting there watching Kevin Durant, get, uh, Kevin Durant get the award, and I'm going, the guy who's looking up at him is going to get the award. He's just as good and just as explosive as he is. And, and now it's coming to fruition, uh, but... I, where I where would you that. rank Westbrook right now, though, in the race? I would say he's number four with a bullet, though. Number because, four. Because if he could, yeah, I, would say, Le, I would say behind LeBron, uh, Steph Curry, LeBron, and James Harden. And then I would say Russell. In Westbrook. that particular order? No, I would say Steph Curry, James Harden, LeBron. And Westbrook. And Westbrook. And I look at it a little bit different. I, th I got Harden, Harden number one because I think considering that the White Howard have been out all year, if they're able to hold on to a top four seed, I think that would be remarkable. But what if Russell Westbrook gets his team to five? They're not going to get that high. Well, let's say it's a possibility. But, five is but, five but, is not so that. Steph Curry is the MVP. Five Don't has you 21 losses. They have 25. Five has 21 losses. Well, wouldn't you consider it remarkable too if Golden State went wire to wire as the number as the top yeah, team? They, of the got, they got more help. Yeah, on but this it's team. still nobody called that. Nobody called that. But I'm saying, Ernie, they got a couple All Stars on that team. Listen, R Russell. I mean, James Harden has been without his second best player all year. And if you look, if you actually look at the games, you can't say anybody on Houston Rockets having a great year other than James Harden. Because he's taking all the shots. But I'm saying they're winning, Shaq. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. you always say we reward winning. I do. Golden State, number one all year, Steph Curry MVP, uh, uh, period. Uh, not, not James uh, Harden. And, and it's, I, got, I got Steph on my list second, but if James Harden, especially in the Western Conference, if he can keep the Rockets to a home court the first round of the playoffs, I think that would be remarkable. If this guy gets them to four or five. And I have no problem with that either, Kenny. That would be an unbelievable yeah. fit. Yeah, it would be. So the way they started without him. Again, 25 games to go or so, and still you can't really make the call on this one until we see exactly how it plays out. Anyway, uh, when we come back, this guy taking center stage. It's uh, the latest installment of Shaq. But I can't wait till next week. Historical Shaq in the Fool next oh, wow. week. wow. Historical? Yes. Uh -huh. I, I definitely can't get sick next week. Our perfectionist will be on it. Whoa, that's that's gonna end on Shaq in the floor. Back here on Inside, presented by Kia, and that music can only mean one thing. March Madness nearly upon us. Three weeks or so until, uh, in fact, under three weeks till the selection show, and then that first four on Tuesday, and, uh, and then Thursday, the first full day of the uh, March Madness. TBS, CBS, TNT, and Truth TV. Time for the Sprite Dunk of the Week. Mark L. Brown. But can you really do this dunk when you're down, Kenny, Chuck? No, they were down when he did this dunk? Yeah, they were down. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I got to admit, though, you talk about March Madness. Shaq, the guy at LSU who did the between-the-leg dunk, that was impressive. This was impressive. No, 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 but this actually, he did. Chuck gave credit he, to somebody at LSU. Yeah, you all right? What he you did drinking the, in your cup? He did the right? bean dunk in a game, took it between his legs. 
Mm. I've never seen a guy ask to do that in an actual game. I'm, I'm trying to get buckets. I'm not making no mistakes. I'm dunking it hard. <laughs> you know what? But you know what? The guy I'm did say, if the guy, he said, if he had to miss a dunk, I'd have took him out of the game. He Without wouldn't have played again. But you know what? He didn't miss it. No, he didn't. And he, I was he just did surprised. Not, he, he did not make Shaq and a fool. That's the, let me just say something. That's the closest we're going to come to mention LSU in basketball. To, to, no, to March Madness. Yeah, okay. No, maybe you Auburn don't make it. We can win the SEC tournament. <laughs> How y'all gonna win? And we beat y'all last week. You owe me some money, by the way. Be the SEC and before tournament. we step out the studio, you better have my money. Right. Chico, <laughs> who you go? Who you reckon? Them. Who do you reckon the War Eagles will be playing in the SEC final? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. on, we won't be Nobody. playing the little pull, pit bulls, yeah. the bulldogs. Uh, no, Georgia's gonna get in. Uh, so, uh, it's that time. It is. It is. <clears throat> Music. Yeah. Let's go. Shaq and Fool. What? He's Shaq the Fool. Chuck. He's, He's Shaq the Fool. That dunk in LSU. Number one, Aww. JaVel McGee Come on. makes his 76 er Shaq thing debut. <laughs> JaVel McGee. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, and, I don't and, know if that was a clean block, man. Yeah, I don't know. No, it wasn't. That was a Number two, goal. Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder. Thinks fast under pressure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> jump pass shot? You know, never the, jump, the jump pass is never a good thing. No, the hey, jump pass uh, shot never it. works. You take it. The jump pass anything never oh, works, Kenny. Oh, my Kenny. gosh. Number three, Drew Gooden. Drew Gooden? This rebound goes horribly wrong. He's too old to make mistakes. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. oh, and he scores. Oh. And he scores. Yo, that's why the Wizards lost ah. 12, oh. man. Yo, that's why they struggling, huh? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, come on, Drew. You're too good for that. Number four, Deion Waiters. Oh, Nobody has I missed more that. layups on Shaq than this season than Deion. Oh, wait a <laughs> second. Look at the bench. Look at the bench. Man, Barry's wait, his watch the bench. Hand. The bench, the whole bench yeah. is like, oh, he's Look at his reaction. Watch the, oh, oh, oh. Jeez. Number five, Kevin Love misses the easiest dunk ever. That made Brendan Haywood so sad. Oh, my goodness. Look at Brendan. Oh. <laughs> Cry, little sister. Thou shalt I will admit, die. though, sometimes when you go up and you get caught in between lay it in and dunk, you can get a call. No, that wasn't no I don't. You do. Uh, never happened. If you see something out there that you think should be on I've Shaq and had Fool, a Shaq moment. that's what you do. Uh, you tweet never him had a with Shaq the Shaq hashtag. Ever. Find Shaq one. We, sh we showed a bunch of no, Shaq and moments no, already. We yeah, didn't that, find the Shaq and moment. Again. Those Shaq and Fool was weak. Yeah. They were weak. Thank you. Moments Thank you, Kenny. I got to do my research. Thank you. I ain't got no Shaq and's. Kenny well, this is the best website. Style. You're no question. Yeah, this the is best website. We need to get you a tie on the, on the, um, the next website. that uh, We're going to have an auction. I don't want to brag, but... Uh -oh. oh, just let you know. Thank you, uh, Mayor uh, de Blasio, for the uh, proclamation. And maybe it was Kenny Smith Day in New York City, All Star Weekend. You wait, didn't know wait, about he that. Didn't, well, he, he didn't tell you to your left. No, he gave it to me while I was there. No, you didn't miss it. You no. would have missed it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I got it. You would have missed you it. Two weeks it. to get What's that? the man's yeah, first yeah, I name, Ken? I got it. Yeah. Wait, listen, let's Mayor's talk about the name. name. What's the first name? Okay, Bill. cool. Bill de Blasio. Oh, Blasio. 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 Number one thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, Turner Sports with CharlesBarker.com, the number one website in Turner. Kenny Smith Day. Stop hating. Wait, you didn't Man. tell us to just now. I'm not a bragger. Number one like website you. on all Wait, you're not a bragger? <laughs> Wait, you're not a bragger? I'm not a bragger. Are you kidding? I'm not a bragger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't brag. That, yeah. Thank you, Mayor, for the, for the shout no, out. No, you know he, he didn't, didn't tell you. He didn't tell you it Kenneth Smith Day that you were going. No, he told me already, but actually he had, a, he had an unfortunate incident in his uh, family, so he couldn't come to the show that day. So I didn't want to brag about it, and he couldn't be there, and he had an unfortunate incident. So did he bring it to you? He just sent it in the mail. No, he was coming, and then he had an unfor uh, unfortunate incident. Okay. But thank was you. Was the mayor? Kenny Smith Day. Yeah. Was, was that the mayor? Yes, yeah. thank you. And I know Governor Christie. Governor Christie, what's up, brother? First of all, that's out. New Jersey, fool. It don't matter. I just said the governor. <laughs> it don't matter. No, he said the mayor of New York. I'm, I, you said, you I thought know. he said, well, who's the mayor of New York? No, I said, I, said, I don't know the mayor of New York. I'm from New Jersey. I know Governor <laughs> Christie. Governor Christie Call me. All right. Hey, you got, a, you got another show? You got another show coming up? Yeah, here? yeah, it's coming out on What's True it called? TV. It's called Shaq Inc. Shaq Inc. Shaq Inc. Can we, can we have Are you going to do tattoos? Like? Is, uh, you going to do tattoos? Is that what it is? Shaq Inc. Is it a tattoo? Come on, all the other ink shows are tattoo. What you going to get? It's not Shaq. ink. It's I N C. Because because Ernie he said he said ink, ink like incorporated. Yeah, he's, I know he says Shaq Inc. You don't know that. Yeah, inco in, anyway, Ernie. In the words of Jay Z, I'm not a Jay Z. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business. Man, that's why it's called Shaq Inc. Okay, um, we have a little clip. Yeah. yeah. And 
action. Great Very well done. Yeah. Really? We're cheering for that? It's called art, Napoleon Dynamite. I just don't get it. You don't have to. Just trust a man with five yeah, rings. What's up, Kenny? <laughs> oh, you're rehearsing it? Yeah. <laughs> we don't rehearse at TNT. What you doing here rehearsing? I'm sorry. I'm not as good as you, brother. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh. <laughs> that was planned, y'all. She's, she's looking at me like a <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. So is that... That was no, awful. Is that, no, that, is that, is that, is that no, part of the episode? They, was that? Was they were that? actually rehearsing, rehearsing the scene. Yeah, we're and shooting. And I just busted okay. in. You just busted I in. I just busted the whole scene. So How, was that called was, pain? Okay. Yes, of course it was. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are you ever going to make a good show? I have oh, to make oh, a good oh. show. All my shows have been better than I, your shows. I'm just saying. Are you going to yeah. make a good show? Uh, of course uh, I'm going to make a show. Go. I'm good just show. asking you. This was a really Chuck, weird segment. Chuck, Chuck don't hate me because you ain't me. <laughs> really, really Don't hate me because you ain't me, Chuck. Who's the governor of New York? I don't know. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, Cuomo. Christy, call me. Cuomo. Cuomo? Mayor Cuomo. Mayor uh, Cuomo. I mean, Governor <laughs> Cuomo. Yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> governor Cuomo. Just got uh, started. <laughs> Conley goes into the paint. Conley slithers through and he scores. Conley, that's a three. It's when all of the greatest point guards are listed, sometimes Mike Conley Jr. is not on that list. Is that something that drives you? Uh, most definitely. You see the list, and you know my name's never up there. And I'm always considered underrated and all these things. And those are all the things that I think about when I go in and work out. And those are things that drive me. And, you know, one day I want to be uh, mentioned amongst one of the best in the league and uh, just keep working, and hopefully one day I'll do that. Kristen Ledlow, Grant Hill, Inside Stuff, NBA TV, Saturdays at noon. It's presented by Samsung Galaxy. It's that time. It's time for EJ's Nino Satellite. Presented by no one. So all right, y'all, uh, we're going to go back 13 years for this Nito. February 26, 2002, Chucky Brown made his debut for his 12th NBA team. Suck a look! Ties him for the most with Jim Jackson, Tony Massenberg, and Joe Smith. So in honor of Chucky, we present a spinoff of our favorite Inside the NBA game show. <laughs> it's time for Who Did He Play For? Hey! Chucky Brown. Yes, Chucky Brown, the uh, That's central my guy. in this edition of Nito. Hey, 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 how are you? Good to see you tonight. Okay. And you know what's really cool about this? It, it's not like, uh-oh, Chuckster, here we go. We're going to challenge you. <laughs> All three of you guys will be involved. Oh, I love it. Hey. Like, can I say one prerequisite? I didn't know we were doing this, but Chucky yeah. Brown was my favorite teammate all right. of all time. That's great. It's, that's wonderful to know. Here's the deal. All right? Here's the deal. You all get to play, but when you miss one, you you're play. out. Okay. So we're just going to try to name all the teams. I can start it? No, you cannot start it. Why? We're going to start with the big fella. Okay. We're starting over here. Shaquille O'Neal, name one of the teams, there were 12, that Chucky Brown played for. Rockets. Oh, boy. Yes, that's not, a baby. That's not fair, man. <laughs> Wait, come on, yeah. man. That's not fair. I should sure. be able to start. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, uh, you were listening. You know that he was one of your teammates. Okay. Who else did Chucky Brown play for, Kenny? Oh, uh, Sacramento. Sacra yes, he did, yes, he did, as a matter of fact. Oh, a lot of Chucky stuff. Oh, some, there's some pressure here on the Chuckster. <laughs> uh, Who yeah. else? You got a lot of choices here, Chuckster. Who I else don't. did Chucky Brown um, play for? <laughs> Chuck. Yes, the, the uh, <laughs> Golden State Warriors. He did play he did. for the Golden he State did. Warriors. He actually did. Oh, now it really uh, ratchets up the pressure on Shaquille O'Neal. Who else did Chucky Brown play for? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Atlanta. He did play for the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, he, yes, yes, he did. Come on, man. Yes, well, he did. He, he actually played for this team, now called the Brooklyn but he played for the New Jersey Nets. He did indeed yes, he play did. for the Chuck New Jersey Luck. Nets. Chuck a luck. Yes. yes. You guys are impressive yes. tonight. Yes, he did. But I think this impressive stretch is uh, about to it's end. It's about to end. Charles, who else did Chucky Brown play for? The what? Los Angeles Lakers. 
He did he play did. for the he Los did. Angeles Lakers. He did. He did. I cannot believe you guys are six for six. <laughs> oh. Shaq has that look in his eye like he's getting the answers in his ear, but I don't think he, well, you want to take your earpiece out? <laughs> Cleaver? Yes, he did. Yeah, he That's where he team. began his career, as yeah, a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he played with yeah, him he twice. Took mine. Played with now, him twice. I'm, now I'm reaching right now. Yeah. I'm just letting you know. So I, I was good up seven down. This is great. Golden State. I said We've already got Golden State. Oh, okay. I oh, well, he's out. He's out. No, no, no. no, no. He's out. We've already got it. We're not going to penalize him. Oh, okay. Charlotte. He played for Charlotte. Twice. Twice. He played fact. for Charlotte. Yeah. He did. I remember that. Charlotte, because he used to wear all those damn T-shirts all around the locker room. So I know some of the teams he played for. Eight for eight. Oh. Oh, Chuckster. Really, he's a... Again, this agonizing delay as Charles with the gears grinding. The Orlando Magic. Oh, he's out. He's out. He's so out. It's come down to it, Family feud. Family and feud. Kenny the Jets. Ah, uh, this is tough, man. Four teams to name. Come on, I gotta win this for Chucky. Jack. He's over here cheating somewhere, man. I'm gonna cheat. Okay, nothing. All right. You the one on your phone texting. Ah. Oh. Underdog, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> underdog. Don't help him out, underdog. I got one. You I know what? I, I love one. Mark Cuban. I'm gonna go with the Dallas Mavericks. He did. Yes, indeed. He did. I yeah. almost Damn. said to that. I almost said another take. Damn, tonight. I got to write that one got up. Three teams left. Portland Trailblazers. Ah. Oh, no! Did you play for Portland? Hey, you want to you want to try to take a crack at the last three? Oh, oh, I bet you I get them. Let's fill them in. What are they? If I get the last three, Chuck got to do 20 push-ups. No, I'm, I'm down with that. Deal? Deal. First of all, he is cheating there. Oh, How am I cheating? Oh, cheating. too bad. They already put the three up. So it's Atlanta, Charlotte, Cleveland, Dallas, Golden State, Houston, Lakers, again. Milwaukee, New Jersey, Milwaukee. Phoenix, Sacramento, and San Antonio. San uh, he did play for the Spurs. Yeah. I almost said this. Ernie, place. I'd like to thank my tutors, TK, Fiorello, oh, and uh, Underdog. That ain't right, <laughs> man. What? That ain't right, man. No, no, no. They didn't help that me. Right. my tutors. That ain't right. That's a wrap for me. inside. That ain't right. He's they getting the answers me. in his ear. Tutors or cheaters? Hey, Chuck, oh, I won. <laughs> you know I knew you better. They didn't help me. Chuckie B, I knew you better than anybody. I ain't got nothing but. <laughs> oh man, I see y'all right. next week. Thank you, tutors. <laughs> oh man, nobody give me no answers.